So hello guys, this is Fernando again, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a little tool that I made for, for the company I worked for. Uh, it, it is a tool to rename files in Inventor. And of course, there are tools already for doing this, this kind of task, so this is just another breaking on the wall. But um, So this is, this is a tool specifically designed to solve a problem of the company that I work for, so it's probably, it's probably going to have some issues for your for your problems, but that's the reason why I'm, I'm releasing this first code. So you can you can tweak it and do whatever you want with it, or maybe you just inspire yourself by it. So how does it work? Before I talk about how does it work, uh, I want to highlight that I know Design Assistant exists, and I know that it, it is actually a very good tool. But the problem with Design Assistant. Okay, so I have Design Assistant here, and I have a small assembly here, and it's actually a very good tool. It shows you all of the, the parts of the file in a tree view fashion, and this is very useful for some operations. So you, uh, if you want to rename the file in a ordered manner, so the application that I worked here, uh, there was an ERP coding system that actually uh, created this this seven digit codes that are before the parts name. And because of all the reasons, we, we decided that uh, we would include it in the file name. And of course, there are other solutions for that, but you know, never mind. That's, that's, that's the way the company works. So uh, every time that I needed to copy a design, uh, I needed to change the, the, the part numbers, or maybe I actually changed the part and most of the times I would because it was a different design, but I wanted to inspire myself in, a, in, a, in an older design. So many, many times it happens that I changed the part, I updated the design, like for example here, it's a complete design, and then I needed to change only this code on all of the parts for the new code. And yeah, this is, this is a very, very boring task because you, like even in design assistant, you would have to go here, click rename. It's it's not uh, uh it's not working here because it's a it's an older inverter version. But that that's not that's not the point here. So you would have to click rename here and then click in uh, under name here and change the name and then choose a new name. And you would have to do that for every single part in the assembly. So imagine in an assembly of like 500 parts, that would be a pain in the butt. And yeah, you could do that through a Windows Explorer, but then you wouldn't have the links relinked in the assembly, and then you would have to find the files by yourself, which is the, which is another pain in the butt. So because of that, I thought that we need we needed to do that in a more uh, efficient fashion. And actually, just for your knowledge, this this is a process that took in, like for for a large assembly between three and four hours before the release of the design. So it was a pretty significant amount of time because we need to you know, make sure that all of the numbers are correctly renumbered. And this is like, this is, this is a lot of work. Uh, so yeah, I decided one, one time that I would invest this time into building something that would last longer, you know, so whatever. So let's try and use it. Uh, so how does it work? So I have here installed an add-in that I published under my GitHub page, and it, it is called it, it is it shows up under the menu tools, batch renamer, and uh, I it has also this batch export thing, but I'm not going to talk about it in this video. And I click on batch renamer. I have to have the assembly open, and why why the why is this a requirement? It, it, you know you don't need to do that. But like you wouldn't have to do that, but I would like to, to give the user an opportunity to redo the links on the, uh, of the files in the assembly and solve all the links before it, he actually you know, performed all the renaming. So I found that that was important. Uh, I actually had problems by uh, working with files with unresolved links like this one, but I fixed it. So I think, I think it's working there. So how does it work? So I open uh, I open the batch renamer. Uh, of course, the the unresolved links are not going to show up here. So for example, this ZDIN uh, 933 
it's, it's not anywhere here. So, uh, well, uh, it shows here a, a flattened list. So it's, it's like the design assistant list, but it's, it's flattened out. And of course, there is only one occurrence of each file because the tree is flattened, unlike design assistant. And so how does it work? Uh, we have here a column called original file name and a new column called new file name. It's very simple. You know, you only have to change the file name. And you can do, although you can do that manually here, so for example, manual renaming and then come up with a new name. You can do that and it's going to show in bold because it's going to be renamed. This part, this particular part is going to be renamed. So it's going to show in bold just for you, for the sake of knowledge. And maybe, maybe when you do the batch operation, you want to make sure that all of the parts are being bold or not. So whatever you, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to exclude that. And so this is the manual, manual way of doing it. So it's not very practical. And, uh, of course that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So I have this button here, load renaming spreadsheet. And here in the top tip, it says that there, it's going to load the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet needs to be in CSV. Uh, uh, forget about the semicolon separated. Actually, you can use commas now. Uh, I, I probably should fix that. And so the format is old file name, comma, or semicolon, new file name. Old file name, new file name. Old file name, new file name. No headers. If you have headers, it's going to ignore it because it's not going to find it anywhere in, in this list. So it's going to, it's going to pop up a message about it. So uh, I chose CSV because it's much easier to read than the Excel file. And it's as easy to create as the Excel file. Actually, it's, it's something that uh, uh, we're going to see that is actually better. So let's create one spreadsheet like that. So in this top folder of my GitHub page, I have here this spreadsheet called import file names to Excel. And this is just a macro that I made in order to uh, work with the file names in Excel. So that, you know, that's, that's kind of required. And I chose Excel because it's, it's a more, much more a flexible tool. Anywhere, anything that I've programmed wouldn't be enough. So I realized that it's better for you to use Excel. You know, everyone has Excel. So how does it work? Uh, I have the, here this button called add file. I click on it and then, so I can choose all the files that I want. And of course it's going to accept only, accept, uh, accept only inventor files. So I'm going to select the file that I want to rename. So right now I have all of the files selected here. Uh, they count as uh, 162 files. And uh, I, I need, so they, they load in this first column, which is the old name column. And I want to do a new name that follows some rule. So the rule that I'm going to create, and this is the reason why I, I wanted to use Excel, because you can actually come up with any rule that you want. So the rule that I'm going to create here is uh, I'm going to change this code here, this string of seven digits for another string, uh, string of seven digits. I'm going to just, you know, come up with some like uh, arbitrary number. So let's say 2 million, uh, 2 million, no, 2, 1, extra 0. Okay, so 2 million, right? And let's do it sequentially. So I have all of these over here. And then, um, and then I'm going to just replace the seven first digits of this by something else. And then it works. Okay, so this... Uh, this equation here is, uses the rule that I came up with. You choose your naming rule. So I'm going to paste it as value. So I can delete this because this is unneeded and actually it's going to crash the program. Uh, it's not going to crash, but it's going to throw an error if you have more columns than the two columns that I, that you need, you know, so, so you got, you got to get rid of everything else. And then you go here and save as, as a CSV, right? So, so here is showing the message. Yeah, I want to save it as CSV, whatever the formats are going to be lost. That's not my problem. So, all right. So now we have the CSV. So how does it work? I click remote renaming spreadsheet. I double click the, the spreadsheet and then it changes all the files that it found. 
the files that it didn't sell, for example, here there is an occurrence of it, are going to be thrown in this error message. So the following files were added because they don't have any corresponding files in the assembly parts list. So of course uh, you can recognize this is the main assembly. Uh, this is the main assembly, and because because I, since I used all of the files, I uh, I also selected the main assembly, top level assembly. Uh, uh, it can I could I could rename the top level assembly, but it, it sometimes. You'd better do that manually, and it's only one, so I, I I decided not to do that. Well, I'm gonna click OK here, and we can actually review all of the files that are gonna be renamed and the ones that aren't. So, for example, here I have a file that is not gonna be renamed, and you know I'm okay with that. So, all of these files are gonna be renamed, and I can now I, I'm kind of ready to click here on perform renaming. But before I do that, let me let me go through all of the options that are here, so you can actually understand what they do. So it's showing the current project file path, just for you to under, to just for you to make sure that this is actually the project that you're working with. Because sometimes we have you know we have a copy in the desktop and whatever, and we want to make sure that you know we we don't mess up with the wrong folders. Otherwise, it's going to be a terrible thing. Uh, another thing that I did. Here is a backup plan. So this is this has pack and go, and it's actually going to perform a similar operation as the pack and go itself of Inventor uh, to a backup folder. So here you can select a backup folder. Uh, my backup folder now has 318 megabytes. I suggest you to do the backup in your local machine, so it's it's like uh, it's faster to copy. Uh, you can edit the backup folder under this button and you can purge it because after doing this operation several times uh, it's going to be a very large file and then you know you know like after after a while you you already release the project so you don't need the backup anymore so you can purge it uh, uh, of course you've got to be careful because this actually is going to clean everything inside this folder so you you've got to be careful not to have anything else uh, and here under other options, I included a checkbox here that says create empty IDW file. And what it's going to do is going to create this drawing file that are empty. Why, why, why in the hell would you do that? Yeah, I don't kind of understand because this is not easy for me. But some designers in my company ask for it because they, they act as reminders that they need to do that, you know, these drawings. So, for example, if they print everything and then there comes comes up an empty drawing, it's probably because they didn't, they forgot to do something. So, you know, <laughs> it depends. But uh, for, for some people it's useful. And also it's, it's useful in the sense that you can, you know, copy all of the files and like drag and drag like 10 or 12 files into the inventor and then, you know, go uh, detailing all of the drawings one by one and making sure that everything is, is fine. So for, for some people in their like mind process, it's working, uh, it works. So yeah, of course, in order to create an empty IDW file, you need, you need an IDW template. So this is the template and it's actually gonna copy this, this file and then paste it on, the, on your folder with the new name. It doesn't do any linking, it doesn't do any fields inside of the drawing. It's just a copy and paste empty drawing. Moving on, we have also here these change file in, change files in the library checkbox that uh, allows or denies library access. So here we have a column that says library. Let me let me let me expand it. So it says library, and if if it's true, and this checkbox is unchecked then regardless of this file being uh, marked for change, it's not going to be changed. Because sometimes we don't want to change the library files for some reason. Maybe we don't want to mess up with the work in the library or whatever. So I decided to include this option so you can actually make sure that that's, that's not going to happen. You know. So the last button here is the actual thing. It performs the renaming. So it asks you whether you're sure because you this is this is this is a file system operation it's going to delete files on the system and 
you're gonna you gotta make sure that everything is fine and you know you actually might lose data by doing this so you got to be very very careful i suggest you to go through smaller assemblies to understand exactly what it's doing and then after that you go to bigger assemblies you know and then okay that's how it works I, i'm sure it's backing everything up and then i actually can do larger assemblies and like important stuff so also it says that the current assembly is going to be safe and closed uh, and this is required uh, actually it's not required but this is the only way i could i could work around that it didn't uh, that it worked with unlink, uh, broken links in the assembly so uh, it turns out that inventor work uh, you can't save an assembly with broken links through code unless like it crashes unless you do the the uh, unless you do it with assembly closed i don't quite understand why so what do i do here i save this assembly uh, and and then i close it and then i do the thing that i need to do like the all of the uh, reference relinking so uh, it asked me well do you want to continue yes so when i do that then it's going to perform a pack and go it uh, redo, redoes the references inside of the copied files. So, for example, I have a, a sub-assembly. It needs to be re-referenced, too. It's not only the top-level assembly, but all of the sub-assemblies. And so it does that. It takes a while because it actually opens each and every of the sub-assemblies and redoes the, the, re the references and then closes it, closes it. So while it's doing that, it's actually, uh, it, it has, so let me group my tab. It keeps the old file. It copies them, so you're gonna ha you're gonna have twice as much memory space being occupied during during the operation. So bear in mind that this is this is something. Uh, it, now it closed the top level assembly. Uh, it already saved it, but now it's saving it because it re re redid the links, and now everything is done. Uh, the operation has been completed successfully. 161. Not 162 because the top level assembly hasn't been renamed. And files were renamed and released. So I press OK here. And now it's supposed to only have the new file name uh, and not only like if all of the old files have already been deleted. So they're not going to be showing up over here. And uh, of course, the main assembly hasn't been renamed. You know what? Let's do it. So I'm going to paste the new name on it. And then I'm gonna open it up. And there are broken links. As I said, there are broken links. So the links are of library files that I don't have here in this computer because I'm not in my in my company's network. So I'm just gonna skip, 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 skip. Yeah, whatever. Inventor allows you to work in files. But yeah, this is also another one, a simulation. But all of the files that are actually inside the folder are there. So none of the links has, uh, have been uh, lost in the process. So we can open here like the, the sub-assembly trace and see, for example, all of the files have, have actually been renamed. And the fact that it loaded the assembly in the same, like it, it is the same exact assembly. So uh, we don't have any missing parts here. So yeah, I think that's it. And um, well, if this is useful for you, please let me know. If you have any doubts or any bugs, uh, you can uh, you can report them to me. Of course, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not doing this full full time, so I might take it might take a while for me to to uh, get back to you. But uh, I hope that that's useful for you. And thank you so much for watching.